Welcome to our presentation, the sandwich situation. We would like to do some introduction into Ansible modules and how to combine them with the OpenStack SDK. My name is Niels Magnus, and I have the great pleasure of having my uh, colleague, Artem Goncharov, with me, uh, who's also a cloud architect in the Open Telecom Cloud and also uh, deeply involved in several OpenStack projects, including the OpenStack SDK. Let's have a look on uh, what we are talking about um, today. Um, most of you are probably familiar with uh, Ansible in one way or the other. So configuring software with this uh, framework is pretty easy. Provisioning for provisioning um, of uh, cloud resources like servers, volumes, networks, and stuff like that. Um, often other tools um, come into your mind, uh, like for example, OpenStack Heat or Terraform or whatever else. But as we want to um, highlight here in this uh, presentation, it is also quite easily uh, possible um, to configure and create and manage resources uh, with Ansible itself, especially with so-called Ansible collections. Um, we have a short example here how this could be done and uh, we'll uh, show a more in-depth example uh, in a minute. The overall uh, architecture is that um, we write a playbook with uh, um, invocation of Ansible modules. The Ansible modules internally call the OpenStack SDK. And the SDK itself uh, translates everything into API calls, gets uh, the results back, parses them, and uh, passes, um, passes these results back uh, to Ansible. So that is the big overview. Can we go um, one more slide? Yeah, and, uh, and here we have uh, um, described a little bit the Ansible flow of uh, control. And maybe that's a good uh, point to explain um, how this works. Could you do that, Artem? Yeah, sure. So, uh, how Niels already mentioned, playbook in Ansible is a set of individual tasks that actually describe the state on the target system, which Ansible should try to ensure it, it is really currently. Uh, so, the playbook is a list of individual tasks. For each of these steps in the playbook for each individual task, Ansible is copying from the controller host to the target system where it should be executed or the state should be ensured uh, the module itself into some temporary directory. Uh, what might be interesting here to say is really that uh, example, if we would like on the uh, remote system to ensure that the user exists, for example, then we clearly need to connect to this remote system. While when we are trying to ensure something is present on the local host, we are doing this on the local host. So anyway, in the concept of Ansible, there is a connection between the controller machine from where the playbook is being uh, orchestrated and the target machine where the action is actually executed. So going in our uh, workflow further, there are different connection types possible in, uh, in Ansible for the connection really to the target machine. If this is a really remote machine, Ansible can connect to it using SSH, even FTP is possible and all the other weird and unweird possibilities are there. If the target system is actually still a local host, if we would like to ensure something on the controller, then we might be using uh, Bash, uh, different SH or whatsoever the uh, other possible. So basically what, what Ansible is doing, it is copying the module to the target machine uh, into temporary directory 
on the target machine, it invokes it using a separate Python interpreter, uh, passing it all the variables which are passed, uh, which are described in the playbook. In our case of Ansible, or not, not Ansible, sorry, of OpenStack um, provisioning, uh, the module in our case, the OpenStack module, will invoke OpenStack SDK, uh, which in turn is actually triggering all the final API calls. What's going uh, further? Basically, the module is passing the result of the API invocation after it retrieved the result back to the controller or to the Ansible playbook utility so that it is capable in using those results in some further steps. Maybe we should do a, a brief example on that. Oh. Um, as you can see here, um, this is uh, the installation and the invocation um, of a very simple playbook that we explain uh, in a minute. So in this example, we just go to our, our home directory, create a, a virtual environment, activate uh, it, and install both Ansible itself and the OpenStack SDK. So this works for every Linux machine, for example. Um, if uh, we want to um, issue commands that um, actually work on the OpenStack SDK itself. We need the Ansible collection for that. And this is called OpenStack.cloud and can be installed with Ansible Galaxy. Then obviously we need to create a playbook explaining what kind of resources we want to create or modify or manage. And then we can invoke it with the last line here, Ansible playbook dash I inventory, which is uh, just listing um, the, um, uh, the systems that we want to manage, or in this case, localhost. Actually, this is uh, an optional parameter. And in our example, we um, coded this uh, directly anyway. Then we ne need to pass uh, the playbook and the interpreter itself. And it's very important to understand that this interpreter needs to be present on the target machine. So, but since in our um, example here, the target machine is the local host. So that is just fine because we just created this virtual environment and in the virtual environment, there's the binary uh, to the Python and everything that we need, the uh, prerequisites, uh, especially the OpenStack SDK is installed there. So that is how it is invoked. And now let's have a look into the playbook itself. We want to provision a server here. Uh, we provide a name using OpenStack Cloud Collection. We, uh, we are going to uh, connect to localhost because that's the system from where we orchestrate uh, the future cloud server. And then we have a number of tasks. There are one, two, three uh, on the left-hand side and two extra tasks on the right-hand side and, and a special one uh, at the very end. So we start with provisioning a network and um, well, pass just an identifier cloud uh, and a name for that. Um, to the network and do the same thing with a subnet and with a router. And as you know, those are prerequisites uh, that need to be um, prere uh, prerequisite um, resources that need to be uh, available before you can provision a server itself. So once we created those three um, resources, my net, my subnet and my router, we can provision the server itself and use for that um, the module openstack.cloud.server and provide all the attributes for that. So, and that's it. And as uh, an example of uh, doing the other way around, so retrieving some information from the cloud, from cloud uh, resources, we have uh, the two remaining um, 
invocations of a module and please take a look at the name of the module here. It's openstack.cloud.server underscore info. So that fetches the server details of the virtual machine VM and passes it to the internal variable server info and displays it uh, with a special command uh, debug here. So that's the whole magic, uh, how to use uh, an, um, the SDK uh, within the playbook. And now let's see how this is implemented internally. Atem, could you take over? Yeah. So actually in Ansible, in the collection of OpenStack, and actually this is pretty much everywhere in Ansible, there are two types of modules. One is info module, which is basically there just to fetch information about the remote resource or about the really the state on the system and the action module, which is creating the resource or updating or deleting the resource. Let's have a look quickly into the one example of info module taken out from our collection, from our OpenStack collection. The module is for basically fetching information about volumes, about uh, cinder volumes. I will not be going through the details really very deeply of the how Ansible modules work. Therefore, if you would like to contribute or if you would like to get really more deeper understanding how the modules are structured, please follow some of the links that we will uh, post, uh, we will have later in the presentation. Um, but just very, very briefly, Ansible requires that your code, your module is bringing also valid documentation with it. So that's what we see at the very first line documentation. We are not describing the content of this documentation precisely because it's really long and long and long and Ansible really requires that and forces this documentation really to be valid one documentation as the uh, documentation as the code first or code as a documentation first, <laughs> however you would like to name it. Uh, it also, there is a possibility to describe return value, what is expected the module to return, what is the structure of the response and potentially also an optionally, basically an example of the invocation, different ways how you would like to, in, uh, how you can invoke the module. What we do then, uh, then next is pretty much familiar to everyone uh, who is having not only Python, but any developer experience is basically we are in importing a class definition. We are in importing OpenStack module itself. This is um, more or less our entry point, how the modules should look like. And what we do further, we declare, we define how the basically, what, what our module actually is. And the first, what we are actually doing is we are describing in the code which parameters this module is actually supporting. So in our example, the volume, listing volumes or finding the volume from the Cinder point of view is supporting um, the following parameters. Details, whether we would like, for example, to get information about the volumes with deeper details or without details, whether we would like to list volumes for all projects in the domain or just for current pro project, whether we would like to list only volumes with this name, for example, find, find particular volume would be clearly specifying its name, or whether we would like to list all, uh, all volumes which are currently available in available state or vice versa, all volumes in the error state. So basically we describe to the Ansible which parameters this model is supporting, what is the type of each individual parameter, whether it is required or not, whether it has default value, uh, which enum values it is supporting uh, and so on and so on. So, after we have described to Ansible which, which parameters are supported, let's go through the function itself that does really the action. And you see, this is a very cool example of how easy can it be with the help of OpenStack SDK really to get information from the cloud. We have a more or less, not more or less, but literally a two-liner. 
In the first line in the run function, we are invoking block storage volumes function from the self.con, which is more or less establishing connection to the cloud that we have chosen. And this is coming uh, already pre-connected by inheriting from OpenStack module uh, class. We are passing uh, into the call all the parameters that we have, uh, that we potentially have converting it uh, explicitly into list since the SDK is returning when you are listing resources, SDK is returning Python generators and therefore it's more or less kind of like required to convert it to list before we are able to return uh, it by Ansible to the invoker. And the next line is actually what we are doing is we are telling, okay, Ansible, I am the module and I'm ready. I'm exiting, passing you the following JSON information. Volumes is equal to results and which might be list, might be single entry, whatever it is. And at the very end, we have some kind of pretty familiar to anyone bootstrapping of the module. So nothing, nothing really weird here. You so see, it's yeah. maybe a good, good place to point out that uh, uh, if you intend to implement something like this uh, yourself, um, you are uh, to, to stand on the shoulders of giants uh, and actually leverage uh, the code of the SDK, um, it makes sense to familiarize yourself a little bit uh, with the SDK itself. This is uh, why we have provided the link um, to the documentation here in the example. But uh, how to implement now uh, an action module? Okay. Yep. And this is exactly it. So we see pretty much familiar stuff from the previous slide. Uh, we have documentation, return, example. We are also inheriting from, oh, I, for, I have forgotten to have an import, but we are all pretty smart people. We will be able to find it out. We are inheriting from OpenStack module. And again, we are describing what are the supported arguments by this particular module. And uh, we are currently looking to the real example of volume backup module, the module which is creating or deleting or managing really back, uh, volume backups. Pretty much new stuff compared to the previous slide. We are having uh, additional, additional stuff that Ansible or this module is supporting. There are some different uh, weird ways how to say to Ansible, in case this parameter is set, then I would like that some additional parameter becomes also mandatory or vice versa or whatsoever. So in, in this particular case required, if we see a pretty much confusing construct, but it can be really very simply described as the following. If state is equal to present, then volume, then the list of parameters, including a single value volume is required. That's it, there is nothing more. And the next, what we are doing also is we are describing to Ansible whether our module is supporting check, mo uh, check mode. And check mode in Ansible is more or less something like a dry run. So the module is expected to evaluate whether it should do something, but it is expected again, not to do anything in reality. So just, just to evaluate whether the backup should be created or not, but not created. So what we are looking on further, next function, so far we are not looking into from where the function is invoked. We are simply describing the function which is responsible for creation of the backup. The very first uh, step, what we are doing here is we are evaluating if we are in check mode, more or less return saying, yeah, we are going to do something. Uh, what we are doing further, we are extracting some of the parameters for easier access uh, in the following codes. Uh, change is equal to false is more, more or less uh, starting the value, default value. And what we are doing further is we are trying to find volume. In order to create a backup, you need to have a volume that you are going to create a backup of. So volume is really a prerequisite here. 
We then also specify some initial attributes that we would be passing to the um, to the backup, like name is equal to name, volume ID, force is incremental, and so on and so on. All the attributes that are supported on the OpenStack on the on the Cinder side by the backup. Next page is a basically continuum of the function responsible for creation of the backup. If user has passed a snapshot to us, we are searching for this snapshot in the cloud. Exactly also to be able to pass in to the create backup uh, snapshot ID. We are also injecting metadata description, whether they are set or not. And the most important step here, more or less in the middle of the slide is the invocation really of the creation of, of the backup creation. You see backup equals self con block storage create backup passing all the parameters. So pretty much we are done here. Uh, but what if what if the user invoking the Ansible is really willing to wait until backup will become available? Since pretty much every following steps, every following step might require that the, the backup is not simply there, but is really available. For example, if you have a volume, you can't create a backup of the volume until this volume becomes available. And the same with snapshot. So what if we need to wait until the backup uh, becomes available? The user can pass uh, in the parameters wait variable or wait parameter, which is actually by default, just for you to know, is set to true. And in this case, we are more or less waiting until the backup would become available. You see pretty interesting construct, wait for status, passing a backup, status available, basically describing exactly the expected state. And we are telling that we would we are allowed to wait maximum timeout uh, number of seconds. So if we have waited and we have achieved the backup that, that the backup becomes uh, went into the status available we are exiting with change equal true telling to the ansible uh, or to the invoker side that yeah we have done something and this is your result volume backup is the structure id uh, as an additional data Otherwise, if we got an exception that we are simply raising uh, raising exception further, or in this particular case, not really raising an exception further, but in uh, signaling to Ansible that we have failed with the following JSON data. And then if we were not expected to wait, we are still having our regular exit JSON, uh, which is more or less also returning the same data. Now the next function with create we are done. What if user would like to delete the, uh, the backup? This is the function that is responsible for doing that. And pretty much in the same way, if we are in the check mode, return true. If we have the backup, then let's delete a backup. Okay, we have deleted the backup here as you see in the code. And again, we have pretty much same construct if user would like to wait until the backup would really disappear. Not simply that we send an API call to delete it, but we really need to ensure that the backup has disappeared. So pretty much everything same. And at the very end, exit JSON change true. Pretty much done. And then the main function, the main function which is invoked um, by, by the Python interpreter, our entry point into the module. The run uh, name equals, so again, extracting display name just for easier access, while it might be not even necessary, but in this case, we are doing that. What we are doing, since we are taking care about backups and user might have passed us the name, let's try to find this backup. Uh, and then we have a basically a choice. If the state, if the requested state uh, by the user in the playbook was present, so meaning it is expected that the backup is present. If we don't have a backup, but we are expected that the backup is present, then let's create a backup. So just invoke the function we have seen previously. Otherwise, 
Otherwise, it is may basically important when we are willing to might be update the resource. What if, for example, the name of the backup is changed or the description or the metadata or whatsoever? So this is normally the place where update functionality is taking place. However, in, this current, uh, in the current situation, SDK doesn't support updating of the backup. And basically, someone even says this is not really necessary. I would just rather delete the backup or recreate it, and that's it. So that particular, in this particular example, we are not updating it. SDK doesn't support. So what we are doing is basically we are immediately exiting, telling to Ansible we have not changed anything. And then the next couple of lines, what if the expected state is absent? Well, just delete the backup. We have it, just delete it. And that's it, then more or less the, that's, we, we are done. The, the very same bootstrapping code that we have seen in the previous example. And yeah, we are ready. This was easy. Yeah. That was the implementation uh, of the module. And now we just compiled you some extra information on how to place uh, um, this Python code and how to package it uh, all together. So um, one good starting point is uh, the documentation link on the right-hand side, the first one, which explains uh, how the OpenStack um, Ansible collection is implemented and uh, gives some extra information about that. On the directory structure, you can see how, uh, how and where to, to place um, the files that we just uh, described. And if you want to learn how to, well, create, you have started already and to package, to test and to install those um, collections. Uh, that's what the second link is for. And if you want to dive deeper into module development and uh, find out the requirements of Ansible itself in uh, return values and uh, the, the um, passing variable uh, interface, that's what the third um, link is uh, about. And that's it basically. And uh, we are done. But before we are concluding the um, presentation, let me briefly wrap up everything. So Ansible is powerful uh, as a configuration management system. And it can also be used now with Ansible collections and the uh, special case of the OpenStack collection to provision infrastructure as well. Um, yeah, um, modules are the glue part uh, between Ansible and the SDK world. And uh, if packaged as a collection, as an Ansible collection, it's very easy to install them uh, into an Ansible environment and invoke them directly. Um, Modules can also be implemented easily thanks to the existing OpenStack SDK. So uh, take a look at this uh, project um, if you're interested in extending um, the Ansible collections um, with the resources that you frequently use. And that's why we very uh, happily welcome new contributors uh, to, the, to this open dev uh, project in the OpenStack um, community at large. And um, we hope to welcome you uh, there soon and uh, to start contributing to one or the other project. Thank you very much. Before we close the uh, presentation and uh, open up for questions, let me briefly point you to our OpenStack scavenger hunt. So um, for the occasion of the uh, 10 years of OpenStack, we at uh, Deutsche Telekom started uh, a small uh, scavenger hunt where you have to solve 
10 small, not too hard uh, uh, riddles. And uh, if you find out um, the right places where to find the secret passphrase, you can actually win uh, some uh, cool gadget, a photo drone. Uh, if you're interested, just there's the link and uh, uh, we'd be happy uh, if uh, you participate on that. So with that said, uh, thank you very much. If you have any question, ask them either right now or send us an email uh, to Artem and me and uh, we say thank you and ask a question. Thank you, guys.